Hey everybody, welcome to PBM's Video Entertainment. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little different. So, you know one of the greatest things about Thomas and Friends? That is the narrators. Yep. Over the years, we got narrators that are really amazing, some that are all right, and some that are not so much. And some of you are probably, I know what some of you are probably thinking, like, um, who's my favorite narrator? Narrator? That's what we're gonna be talking about. Yep. I'll be ranking all the Thomas and Friends narrators from worst to best from the United States and United Kingdom only. So that means, so that means uh, no um, Japanese narrators, no German narrators, none of that. And also no video game narrators like Robin Smith and stuff like that. I'll be only doing narrators from the model era and the CGI era of Thomas and Friends. So anyways, without further ado, Let's jump into this video of me ranking all the Thomas and Friends narrators from the United States and United Kingdom from worst to the best, starting with number seven, a tie between Joseph May as Thomas in the United States and John Hassler as Thomas in the United Kingdom. Now, some of you may know in the Boaba era of Thomas, um, both the, uh, well, Mattel, however, wanted Thomas the Tank Engine to be the narrator, both the, uh, Joseph May and John Hassler, the voice actors of Thomas the Tank Engine, they, like, basically Mattel wanted Thomas to be the narrator. And in my personal opinion, well, don't get me wrong, I love Thomas as a character, but when it comes to narration, I mean, it's just, in my opinion, it's just weird. Like, in my personal opinion, Thomas should not have been the narrator, in my, in my personal opinion. It's just, it's just weird, in my, in my honest opinion. Now, well, if they if they wanted to fire like Mark Morgan, at least uh, get like get a U.S. narrator, like get someone as good as like George Carlin or Alec Baldwin, and same thing with the, with the United Kingdom, get someone as good as like Ringo or Michael Angelis. yeah. But yeah, overall, like I said, don't get me wrong, I love Thomas as a character, but for narration, he's at the way bottom of my list. Anyways, moving on with... Number 6. Michael Brandon. Now, I know a lot of people in the fandom hate Michael Brandon, and uh, people say it's like the worst Thomas narrator of all time, but uh, I I mean, well, there were some things that I didn't like about... that I didn't like about Michael Brandon's narration. Like, some of his narration could be a little bit off sometimes, and... or see, some people would say most of the time, and some of... The characters they voice could are a little strange, and some could be a little bit off. Like he gave Peter Sam and Oliver this like Western country accents and stuff like that. Like gave Oliver this. Uh, I'm a great Western engine. I shouldn't have to shiver. And of course, uh, Michael Brennan gave this gave Renaeus this voice. Um, I'll show you. How am I supposed to make the children's day really special? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of gave the narrator gauge engines kind of like Scarlett and Renaeus like kind of gave him this like uh, little kids accent little kids voice sorry <laughs> little kids voices like uh, like for Scarlett he's like you're such a scary engine I'm not scared of anything <laughs> but uh, I mean some of his voice for the characters are kind of, I must say they were kind of funny in my in my personal opinion but uh, but yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I enjoyed his narration for season eight. I thought it was, thought it was, thought it was good. In my personal opinion, as a kid, I, I, I thought his narration was pretty good for season eight. As I say, I still think it was pretty good for season eight. And of course, nine, ten. I'll talk about more on Michael Brennan's narration for <laughs> when I review the complete season eight through twelve. Anyways, um, but yeah, in my opinion, Michael Brennan, he's. He's not bad. He's not great. He's just good slash all right, in my personal opinion. And some of the characters that he voiced, like uh, Diesel, Donald and Douglas, and uh, Duncan and Salty, I thought his voice for some of the Thomas characters were, were good, in my opinion. But yeah, like I said, he's not bad. Clear, clearly not the best. He's just good slash all right. Anyways, next up. Number five, Piers Brosnan. Now, 
For me as a kid, I really enjoyed hearing Pierce Brosnan's narration, and as of today, I still think he is definitely a really great narrator for the uh, Great Discovery movie, and that's the only the, the only Thomas production that he ever narrated was the Great Discovery movie. He he was originally going to be narrator for season twelve. Well, let me talk about more on that later. Let me talk about more about like my positive side on Pierce Brosnan, like. The scenes that he did, like, were pretty, uh, sus like, the scenes, like, they, they narrated were pretty suspenseful and cinematic, and it's just, it's really amazing. Like, I'm, I'm glad that Hair Entertainment decided to hire Pierce Brosnan as the, uh, the narrator for the Great Discovery movie. Now, one problem that I have, which let me talk about right now, is, uh, he only narrated the Great Discovery movie. He was originally going to be the narrator for season 12 and, poss and possibly 13 through 16, as well as like those uh, Miller era movies, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, Pierce Brosnan, yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he was originally going to be the narrator for season 12, but uh, either, but that didn't happen. Either he. He quits or he got fired. But yeah, whenever season 12 came, they Hit Entertainment decided to bring back Michael Angelis and Michael Brendan for for some reason. I'm not sure why. But yeah, overall, Pierce Brosnan's pretty great narrator for the Great Discovery movie. It just feels like he could have been narrator for seasons 12 through 16, in my personal in my personal opinion. If the Miller era didn't have to be so terrible. <laughs> Number four. Mark Morgan. Now, when it comes to the CGI series of Thomas and Friends, Mark Morgan is the perfect narrator for that job. Out of all the narrators that did the CGI series, Mark Morgan's the best one. I thought he did a way better job than the two Michaels and a way better job than Joseph May and John Hassler, in my personal opinion. Well, here's the reason why I think Mark Morgan's the best Thomas Tom, CGI is the best CGI Thomas narrator. Well. One, his narration was beautiful. Second, some of the action scenes that he narrated were spectacular. And yeah, his narration for seasons 17 through 21, the entire Brenner era was perfect. And then the Brenner era movies that he narrated were pretty, pretty sweet in my personal opinion. Here's, um, here's one issue I have though. Um, some of his uh, narration, like, uh, for, for some of the movies and some of the episodes. Feels like he didn't narrate a lot. Well, for example, Journey Beyond Sodor, um, he didn't narrate a lot in that movie. And whenever season 21 came around, um, feels like he didn't narrate a lot in that season as well. It, at least for at least for what I think. But yeah. And first of all, whenever um when whenever season 17 came around when I was uh 12 years old, um, I was listening for the narrator. Um, when I was watching the U.S. dub, I thought it was Michael Angelis coming back to narrating U.S. Thomas episodes, and then I listened carefully, listened, then I listened, uh, closely, closer, uh, excuse me, and I realized that was not Michael Angelis. It was, um, it was, uh, somebody else, and then I looked up on the Thomas Tank wiki, it was Mark Morgan, and now as a Preteen slash teenager, I really enjoyed his narration, and as to today, I think he's like the best Thomas narrator for that series. Sorry if you can hear an airplane noise, but yeah, overall, he's pretty good in my personal opinion. If you guys haven't seen like, for some people that haven't seen the CGI series, please go watch the Mark Morgan episodes. They, they're really amazing in my personal opinion. And of course, as we all know, in the in the fandom when it comes to cgi series the brenner era kills it it is phenomenal of course <laughs> so yeah and of course mark morgan's the man for the job number three michael angelis so um recently i've been watching um the michael angelis uh, uk dub episodes from thomas and friends well mainly seasons seasons three through seven of course <laughs> i I gotta say, he's a pretty great narrator. Well, first of all, let me say, um, when I was a kid, when I first heard Michael Angelis, um, well, first of all, when I was a kid, I don't remember what age I was. Pro I was probably in like 
either in it's probably in um either in the first or second grade i'm not too sure but um yeah i first uh heard michelangelo's narration on youtube for for thomas and friends and i gotta say he's i was when i was a kid i was like wow he's pretty good and as today i still think he's a pretty great narrator i could see why a lot of people over in britain and europe love him and um and whenever me and my youngest brother received a uh, VHS copy of New Friends for Thomas, I thought it was going to be Michael Brandon again. But then I realized that it was Michelangelo's. And Michelangelo's was the original uh, narrator for both UK and US dub of Thomas and Friends. And some of you will probably think, well, first of all, Michelangelo's narrated seasons 3 through 16, which I know that's a lot of seasons. Well, he's the longest narrator for, for the UK at least. Um, but yeah, he just narrated seasons 3 through 16 in the United Kingdom. And the only, the only episodes that got U.S. dubbed by Michelangelo's are four episodes from season 7 and two episodes from season 6. And they can all be found in the new Friends for Thomas home media release in the United States. So, so what do I think about Michelangelo's? Well, as a kid, when I was watching, um, the UK dub of Michelangelo's first season three um i thought it was um i thought it was a little off at times like some of his narration was a little off in my personal opinion but uh look looking at back now um i thought he did a good job for season three i mean in my opinion not bad not the best it's just good for me i mean i would prefer george carlin's narration when it comes to season three now, whenever um, seasons, now when it comes to seasons four through seven in, in United Kingdom dub, Michelangelo's, um, I thought he did a way better job narrating um, seasons four through seven in United Kingdom. I thought he did a better job than than uh, season three in UK dub, in my personal opinion. And as for his narration for the hit era, um, um, I thought it was um, it was good. It was all right and then the miller era i didn't hear i i didn't watch much of the miller era uk dub episodes of michelangelo's because well i'm not a huge fan of the miller era in my i'm gonna be honest <laughs> but um but yeah for the classic series michelangelo's like for the uk dub episodes of season three through seven in the uh united kingdom he's pretty great in my personal opinion Number two. Now, I'm not sure which one I like better, but um, but for number two, it's a tie between Ringo Starr and Alec Baldwin. So first, let me talk about Ringo Starr first. So I can still remember as a kid whenever I was at my grandmother's and she had Best of Percy on VHS. And when I was watching Percy Takes the Plunge, I heard Ringo Starr was like, wow, okay, that is not George Carlin. Who is that? And then then uh, whenever I uh, whenever I rented uh, Thomas Gets Tricked on VHS from a library and stuff like that, and I realized that that uh, that it's uh, more episodes from Ringo Starr, and then I looked at the uh, the box and I was like, oh, it's uh, Ringo Starr. So I've looked up on online and see how many VHS Thomas and Friends Home products that Ringo Starr have done and narrated. Like I know he did like the first five Thomas VHS tapes in the United States and he also narrated one episode that was in Best of Percy which is Percy Takes the Plunge and he also narrated the uh the uh, Thomas and Friends early years DVD box set which is of course the UK dub and also um he narrated some episodes in Greatest Stories and some episodes in um uh Engine Friends so so for Ringo Starr's narration well he narrated the first two seasons of Tom narrated the first two seasons of Thomas and Friends, both the UK and, U and US dub. Now, for the UK dub, he narrated all the episodes from the first two seasons. For the US dub, he narrated um, all of season one except one, which is Whistles and Sneezes, which I don't know why Ringo started in US dub, Whistles and Sneezes. I don't know why. But, um, but for season two, most of the episodes he narrated in um, US dub, if I recall correctly, some of the episodes that Ringo Starr, that Ringo Starr have done in the United Kingdom, he didn't, 
do them again in U.S. dub for some for some odd reason. So they had to get George Carlin to narrate this episode and that episode. Basically, they had to get George Carlin to narrate episodes that Ringo Starr didn't do in the United States. But yeah, in my opinion, I think Ringo Starr is like the best, the best uh, British narrator in my personal opinion, because uh, I think his narration is just, it's just really great, and I, and I uh, feel nostalgic for him when it comes to British Thomas narration stuff like that. <laughs> Anyways, jumping to uh, Alec Baldwin, um, as a kid, I thought Alec Baldwin did a really phenomenal job with uh, seasons five and six, in my in my personal opinion, and he did a really great job playing the role of Mr. Conductor in the Magic Railroad movie, and he also narrated a few parts in the Magic Railroad movie. Now, people are, I know some people like Alec Baldwin, some people don't like Alec Baldwin. It feels like Alec, ba Alec Baldwin kind of have gotten like, mixed feel mixed thoughts on people had like mixed thoughts when it comes to Alec Baldwin being the narrator well I know a lot of people prefer Alec Baldwin's narration for season five of course a lot of people didn't like his uh narration for season six well um in my opinion I thought his narration for season six was as good as was as good as number five and I know for people have issues with issues with like Alec Baldwin being narrated for season six because um because I know Alec Baldwin didn't give a Scottish accent for Donald and Douglas and uh, didn't give a Scottish accent for Duncan in season six, even though Alec Baldwin gave a Scottish accent for, um, for Duncan in season five. And I gotta say, for some of his uh, um, voice acting for some of the characters like um, Bill and Ben in season five and then Duncan in season five and then Salty in season six and then Sir Topham Hatt overall, like, some of his voices were pretty amazing in my personal opinion. But yeah, overall, I think Alec Baldwin's, uh, Alec Baldwin's a pretty great narrator. And my number one favorite Thomas and Friends narrator of all time is George Carlin. You knew it was coming, didn't you? Yep. George Carlin is by far my favorite Thomas and Friends narrator of all time. Well... He's been around for my childhood for as long as I can remember. Well, even though I was born in the 2000s, but who cares? Yeah, I've watched George Carlin narrations a lot on VHS, DVD, and on streaming services like Amazon Prime and on YouTube. It's just... Well, every time I hear George Carlin, I always think of Thomas. It's just... He's really, really amazing, in my personal opinion. And why do I think George Carlin's the best narrator? One, um, his narration is beautiful. Second, his um, his uh, his narration is like perfect timing, <laughs> unlike uh, Michelangelo's. In my personal, in my honest opinion, like some of Michelangelo, like I said in season three, some of Michelangelo's narration is a little off. But George Carlin, he killed it. Like, like. He's, his narration was perfect timing. And also, for three, um, some of his, for basically all of the characters that he voiced was perfect. Like, for for Bill and Ben, Gordon, Diesel, Donald and Douglas, Duncan, you name it. It's just, like, everything he did was phenomenal in my personal opinion. And, of course, his character, Mr. Conductor in the Shining Temptation series, it was... It's really incredible. And it sounded like George Conlon had a really, really fun time with uh, Shining Time Station and with Thomas and Friends and stuff like that, in my, in my personal opinion. And of course, I'm not a fan of his uh, comedy stuff like that. It's just a little weird, but I loved George Conlon's voice acting for, uh, for some like the other movies, like he voiced Fillmore in Cars 1, he voiced the Zugor in uh, Tarzan 2, and he voiced some other characters that were in like family friendly movies and the not so family friendly content stuff like that but yeah George Carlin is by far my favorite Thomas and Friends narrator of all time well that about wraps up this video and let me know down in the comments who is your favorite narrator I would really like to know so thanks for watching everybody take care and I'll see you all next time bye